Good morning students, how are you? Today we are going to discuss about two important terms in economics, opportunity cost and marginal opportunity cost. What do you mean by opportunity cost? We can define opportunity cost as the cost of next best alternative for goal. When we connect opportunity cost with production possibility curve, we can see that there are different possibilities, possibility A, B, C, D or E. When we select possibility A, that means 10 units of rice and 0 units of wheat. We and when we select possibility E, 0 units of rice and 4 units of wheat. So, when we analyze these two production possibilities, we can see that in production possibility A, we get 10 units of rice and 0 units of wheat. So, we sacrifice 4 units of wheat in order to get 10 units of rice. If we cultivate our full portion of land for the cultivation of wheat, we get 4 units of wheat. But in possibility A, we sacrifice these 4 units of wheat in order to get 10 units of rice. So, the opportunity cost of 10 units of rice is equal to 4 units of wheat. Opportunity cost of the cost of next best alternative for gold. Rice and wheat. Rice cultivation Wheat cultivation when you be able to get rice cultivation zero. As a matter, we rice sacrifice. Four unit wheat vitamin ten unit rice sacrifice. Adiniana, opportunity cost in the final. Not to get four units of wheat, we sacrifice ten units of rice. So, we can define opportunity cost, the cost of next best alternative for gold. Amkar, vastu kittan vendi. Where uru vastu sacrifice siyan. Marana kala yendi verinu. Venda yendi yendi verinu. Adhani yana opportunity cost of na parayatar. Our resources are scarce. So, we are not able to produce and their things. So, we can define opportunity cost, the cost of next best alternative for gold. Next best alternative for gold, that is known as the opportunity cost. Next term is marginal opportunity cost. Look into the table. There are different production possibilities. We studied about this table and there are mainly, in our example, there are five production possibilities that is A, B, C, D and E. When we select production possibility A, we get 10 units of rice and 0 units of wheat. When we produce or when we select possibility B, we get 
9 units of rice and 1 unit of wheat. In order to get 1 unit of wheat, we have to sacrifice 1 unit of rice. The cultivation of rice decreases from 10 units to 9 units in order to get 1 unit of wheat. Then, in the possibility C, we cultivate 7 units of rice and 2 units of wheat. We get 1 more additional unit of wheat. But in order to get 1 more additional unit of wheat, we have to sacrifice 2 units of rice. 2 units 9, 7. The cultivation or the quantity of rice decreases from 9 units to 7 units. So we sacrifice 2 units of rice in order to get additional 1 unit of wheat. Then in our production possibility D, rice output is equal to 4 units and wheat we get wheat 3 units. So the output of wheat increases from 2 to 3. 1 unit more. We get 1 unit more output of wheat. For that, for that 1 unit, we reduce 3 units of rice. 7 units minus 4 units. 3 units. We sacrifice 3 units of rice. Then in the possibility E, the output, output of rice is equal to 0 and output of wheat is equal to 4. So we reduce or we sacrifice the whole amount of rice in order to get 4 units of wheat. This is known as the, this is known as marginal opportunity cost. We can calculate marginal opportunity cost MOC is equal to delta Y by delta X. Delta Y, delta means change. Change in commodity Y. In our example, we can use Y in the place of rice. And delta X, change in cultivation of wheat, delta X. Delta Y divided by delta X. In our example, for example, in, in uh, combination or in the production possibility B, delta Y is equal to 1, 10 by 10 minus 9. That is equal to delta Y is equal to 1 and delta X is equal to 1. So, marginal opportunity cost is equal to 1. In combination C, in production possibility C, delta Y is equal to, delta Y is equal to 2, 9 minus 7, 2 divided by delta X is equal to 1, 1, that is equal to 2. Then in the Third, the possibility D, delta Y is equal to 3 and delta X is equal to 1, that is equal to 3. This is known as marginal opportunity cost. From this, we can know, understand that in order to get additional units of commodity X, we sacrifice more and more units of commodity Y. At first we sacrifice only one unit of rice in order to get one unit of wheat. And in the production possibility C, we sacrifice two units, two units of, two units of rice in order to get one unit of wheat. Then in the possibility D, we sacrifice 3 units of rice in order to get one more unit of 
commodity X. This is known as marginal opportunity cost MOC. Delta MOC is equal to delta Y by delta X. Kuddal kuddal meet pitan vidi. Oro additional unit to meet pitanum. Namal kuddal kuddal quantity price sacrifice a little bit more. Adium ori unit price sacrifice a little more. Namal unit to meet to vidi. Inni and see and now production possibility like very more. Well. Render unit rice sacrifice in the poor anna, additional item for unit to be together. D and a combination here, moon unit wheat sacrifice in the poor, unco unit additional item utility. Increasing marginal opportunity cost or additional unit to the poor, unco poodle poodle. Commodity Y sacrifice A and D where no. This is the marginal opportunity cost. The terms are opportunity cost and marginal opportunity cost. Opportunity cost means the cost of next best alternative for gold. We can produce. By that wood, either a turbine or a chair. When we produce turbine, we sacrifice or we forego chair. Namada kaiyerola marangundu, thadi kashna gundu. Tamku meshi unda ka, kalengil chekka sare unda ka. Namudu meshi ana, meshi unda ka na ana, a marang ubiyoich dengil. Kasare, Arnoraino, Kasara, Udilia, Nakumilia, Adiniana, opportunity cost in the Parina. Then, next topic we have to study is positive economics and normative economics. Two terms positive economics and normative economics. Next topic we are going to study is positive economics and normative economics. In positive economics, we study about what is what is the condition of certain things. What is what is is studied in positive economics and in normative economics we study about what ought to be. And the idea positive economics and the positive economics we studies what is undertaking in an economy, what is the unemployment level is high in India, the population growth is high in India. That type of statements are come under positive economics, but under normative economics, we studies about what ought to be. What ought to be means, for example, population growth affects economic growth. In the economic growth population growth rate normative economics. Positive economics analysis. There is no chance for analyzing the merits and demerits of an action, economic action. In positive economics, there is no chance for analyzing or looking for demerits and demerits of an action. No moral judgment is undertaken in positive economics. But in normative economics, actions are analyzed by looking whether they are desirable or not. Oro economic actions, other Naladano, other than consequences and the Lamedi, theory session, normative economic silver, number economic policy, formulate another. But end policy lana, end the Tarathala, non policy ana, normative economics and a positive economics for. Economic analysis, we use both these terms, positive economics and normative economics. <coughs> then, 
Another topic we are going to discuss is microeconomics and macroeconomics. There are two branches in economics. Ragnar Frisch divided economics into microeconomics and macroeconomics. We studied the definition given by Alfred Marshall. This definition is known as welfare definition. Alfred Marshall is known as the father of microeconomics. What do you mean by micro? Micro, the word micro comes from the Greek word micros. Micro means small, micros, microscope. The word micro comes from the Greek word micros which means small. So, from the word itself, we can know that under microeconomics, we study only a small parts of economics or individual economic units. Individual economic units are come under microeconomics. It studies the theories of consumer theory, production theory or theories of demand and supply etc. We study only a individual part, individual economic units under microeconomics. Microeconomics is otherwise known as price theory. Price theory and father of microeconomics or the studies of Alfred Marshall gave more importance to microeconomic analysis. So he is known as the father of microeconomics, Alfred Marshall. It gives only a partial uh, equilibrium analysis of an economy. But under macroeconomics, macroeconomics, we study economy as a whole, aggregative economy. In microeconomics, we study about individual economic units, demand, supply, production and cost. It studies about the producers, consumers, etc. But in macroeconomics, we study the economy as a whole. If we study the cases of per capita income under microeconomics, but in macroeconomics, we study about national income, aggregate economic growth, general price level, price level, total employment, total income, etc. The studies or the theories of international trade, trade cycle, general level, price level, etc. are studied under macroeconomics. So we can make a comparison between microeconomics and macroeconomics. Questions may ask distinguished between microeconomics and macroeconomics. That who is known as the father of microeconomics. Father of microeconomics is Alfred Marshall. And the father of macroeconomics is J.M. Keynes. Keynes. In my macroeconomics we studied more theories by J.M. Keynes. Then in macroeconomics, the studies or the macroeconomics gives us a general equilibrium analysis of an economy. When we compare microeconomics and macroeconomics, we can say that microeconomics gives us only a world's eye view. But macroeconomics gives us a bird's eye view. What do you mean by worm's eye view and bird's eye view? We know that worms gives us a small box. Manira, worms, manira. Bird's eye view means 
ആകാശത്ത് പറന്ന് നടക്കുന്ന പക്ഷികൾ വലിയ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ടോട്ടൽ ആയിട്ടുള്ള കാര്യങ്ങൾ ഒരു മണ്ണിര കാണുന്നതിനേക്കാൾ വളരെ വിശാലമായ കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് ബേർഡ്സ് ആയി നമുക്ക് തരുന്നത് അതുകൊണ്ട് മാക്രോ ഇക്കണോമിക്സിന് നമുക്ക് ബേർഡ്സ് മാക്രോ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ഗിവ്സ് എസ് എ ബേർഡ്സ് ഐ യു ആൻഡ് മൈക്രോ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ഗിവ്സ് എസ് എ വേർസ് ഐ യു ആൻഡ് മൈക്രോ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് അനാലിസിസ് ഗിവ്സ് എസ് ഓൺലി എ പാർഷ്യൽ ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം ആൻഡ് മൈക്രോ ഇക്കണോമിക്സ് ജനറൽ ജനറൽ ഇക്വിലിബ്രിയം അനാലിസിസ് ആൻഡ് വെൻ വി കമ്പയർ ഓർ we can compare the microeconomics into a tree in a forest and macroeconomics is compared to a forest macroeconomics ne namukku to kaadinodu bamikka kaadana macroeconomics athrayum valiya oru logana macroeconomics aa kaattile oru vriksha mathramana vrikshathine kurichulla padanamana microeconomics ennu paraya compare kiya so once again we compare or we can distinguish between microeconomics and macroeconomics microeconomics the word micro comes from or derived from the greek word micros which means individual small micros means small it deals with individual economic units that is the economic behavior of a consumer or a producer or an individual the theory is comes under microeconomics theory of demand and supply production and cost etc but macro the word macros gives the meaning the meaning of that greek word macro is large which gives us an idea of the economy as a whole aggregative economy general study of general price level international trade trade cycles money and banking monetary policy of a country etc are studied under macro economics the partial economic and equilibrium partial equilibrium analysis is done in microeconomics and general equilibrium analysis is done in macroeconomics we can compare the study of a forest and study of tree we can compare macroeconomics as a study of forest and microeconomics as a study of a tree in a forest microeconomics gives us a worms i view and macroeconomics gives us a birds i view so today we we'll discuss about opportunity cost marginal opportunity cost positive economics normative economics and microeconomics and macroeconomics now we completed our first chapter this chapter is very important in the examination point of view several questions are asked from this topic now we are going to discuss the important questions asked from this chapter in the public examination i give you the questions and you please write the answers and send to me <clears throat> Okay thank you